Hi guys, welcome to our channel where we are going through the recipe books of the godfather of Italian cooking, Antonio Carduccio. Today we're going to be making an asparagus risotto from Antonio Carduccio's cookbook, Italian Cooking. Okay, we brought 1.7 liters of water to a boil and we're going to add the ends of the asparagus, the hard part, the woody part of the plant. Okay, so we have washed and trimmed the asparagus, just taking off the white, as he said, hard woody part of it. And um, then we're going to go ahead and add the asparagus, the stalk part. We'll go ahead and add that. And we're going to boil this for five minutes. Yes, and so um, while, while we are adding the trimmings, is that is just to flavor the water. So we're kind of creating a vegetable stock that we will be using for the risotto. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep the tender tips um, and add them once the rest of the asparagus has boiled for about five minutes because they're not going to cook at the same time. Those, are, those cook a little bit faster than the rest of the asparagus. Okay, our asparagus has been boiling for five minutes and so now we're going to add the tips to the rest here. Okay. And then we're going to let that boil again for about another, what, three to five minutes until everything is tender. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make sure everything is submersed here and replace the lid and continue cooking. About three to five more minutes. <clears throat> okay, so after we've added the tips, we've boiled the asparagus for five additional minutes. Now we're going to go ahead and remove that into a separate bowl. I don't know if I picked the correct utensil for this or not, but we'll make it work. Yes, so the idea is to keep the water at a boil because we are going to be using that to cook the risotto. And then we are going to just go through the asparagus, separate the, the, the little ends that we are going to discard and the tips which we are going to reserve for later, and then chop up the stalks. Okay. And all right. Okay, so then while we are going to separate our asparagus pieces, we will heat our butter, that's half of the butter, and we are using two ounces of butter. So one ounce of butter will be heated, and to that we are going to add the finely chopped onion. It's one small onion. We're going to add half of our butter, or one ounce, I believe. One ounce. To our pan, and we're going to cook the onions first. Go ahead and let this melt down I suppose and then we will add the onion. And that is one small onion that has been finely diced and then while we do that we are keeping the water at a boil um, because we, we don't want the temperature to drop. Mm, the smell of butter in a pan reminds me of my grandma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She always cooked with butter. And this is probably one of the few Italian recipes where we, you will find no olive oil. I'm sorry, I just thought I felt the world turn, or the world shake, rather. No olive oil, it is the end of the world. Okay, so we're going to add our onion. Again, that's one small onion, finely chopped. And we're just going to go ahead and fry that until it's nice and tender, but not brown. So, Antonio does repeat a lot of his recipes in many of his cookbooks. I think he pretty much owned every single cookbook that he has written. Um, and in, the, in one of his other cookbooks, which is Complete Italian Food, he has a nice little section about risotto. He says that he has been making risotto for 40 years and then he has quite a few nice tips that goes along with that. He says that the best rice for risotto is arborio, baldo, corno, I can't even say this, cornaroli, violoni, nano, or roma. Um, the rice that we are using is the arborio, mm -hmm. as you can see there on the table. Um, pretty much anything else will not do and you do not want to rinse your rice because you want that starch from the rice to make the creaminess of the risotto. 
Um, so he says the principle of risotto is to cook the rice slowly by letting it gradually absorb stock or wine that is added little by little until the rice is cooked. It is important to stir the risotto continuously to prevent it from sticking to the bottom of the pan. Once the stock is made, keep the stock on the hob or the stove top, whatever you call that. It is important to keep the stock at boiling point so that the rice does not stop cooking when the stock is added. I think these onions are ready. Oh, they're ready. Okay, so we're going to add our asparagus. Okay, we have chopped that already. Yeah, and we have set the tips aside. We did not chop up the tips. We're going to use that later for a garnish. So what we will be doing, and I'll just continue where I left off with um, his tips, is um, you're going to stir in the rice and allow it to be coated in the oil and butter. So you want to make sure that that rice is nice and moist and coated by whatever liquid you have in the pan of, or in oil this, that you have in that in pan. In this pan. case, it's butter. Yeah. If you're, he does say if you're using wine in your risotto, to allow that to evaporate completely before you start adding any stock. So what you will be doing now when you're ready to, when the, you think the rice is ready, you'll be adding a ladle full of stock at a time until it is completely absorbed and just keep stirring the risotto so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. So we'll add that. And we'll stir it until the rice absorbs all of the liquid. So I was under the impression that you had to use all of the stock, but actually that's not what it says here. It says um, you're going to be doing that, so once that's absorbed, you will be adding another ladleful, another ladleful, and you'll do that for about 15 minutes. Antonio says that once most of the stock has been used, or towards the end of the 15 minutes, you just test a grain of rice to see if it's done. And it shouldn't be mushy, it should have a little bit of bite to it, but it should be tender. The ideal consistency of risotto is soft and runny. You should be able to pick it up with a fork. Risotto should never be cooked until it is solid. So we've been stirring and adding our stock to the risotto. Um, it actually took more water than we anticipated, so we have added probably, how much would you say? Oh, probably another half liter maybe, I yeah. don't know, maybe not yeah. even, yeah. Um, and it's taking a little bit longer, to, the rice is still a little bit undercooked, it's getting very close though. So, I mean, I know that it's not supposed to be completely soft and soggy, but we also don't want it crunchy. Okay, I believe this is ready now for the rest of the ingredients. So I'm going to go ahead and do just a, a slight taste test to, or a quick taste test to uh, determine if the rice is, is fully cooked. Yeah, and so, mm. we don't I'd want... I'd say we're there. Yeah, we don't want it to get stodgy and, you know, clumpy and whatever. Mm. I, I don't even know what that means because we've, ne we've never made risotto. It's just about perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do now is add the rest of the butter, which is... Another ounce. Another ounce. And some grated Parmesan cheese, and that was two ounces of finely grated Parmesan cheese. Which we have here. Yep, and then we'll just stir that in. All right. I think we're in business, starting to look good. You can plate that up. The butter and the cheese has added a nice additional creaminess to it. Yeah. And really it really good. smells fantastic. I can't wait to try it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to um, garnish this with the asparagus chips that we reserved. And we are going to put some parmesan shavings on top and just a little bit of lemon zest. Okay, so first we're going to go ahead and season this to taste with salt and pepper. Thanks for reminding me. So we are salting, salting it, um, adding salt and pepper to taste. Um, I guess you do this towards the end so you don't over season. I don't know why you do it exactly at the end. And then he's going to give it a taste test to make sure that he's added enough seasoning. Well, I'll stir it in first and then see where we're at. Okay. Mm. And then 
once that's done, we are going to plate it up, garnish it with a little shaved parmesan cheese and lemon zest. Oh, and the reserved asparagus, reserved asparagus strips. Okay, let's clear up everything and see how this tastes. We'll do a taste test. So we are all ready to go ahead and do the taste test. Alrighty. <coughs> We don't really have a frame of reference uh, for this. We've never, either one of us has ever really had risotto much. So we'll see what we think of this risotto. Mm. Mm. Mm, that is nice and creamy. Mm. And the Parmesan cheese there. I'm going to take a little bit of the asparagus. And we put a little lemon zest on there as well. Mm. And that is a tasty dish. And that is delicious. Mm. Would you make it again? I would. That lemon adds. The lemon just puts it over the top. Yes, it'll. Everything touch works of together. And, yeah. Hmm? So yeah. Um, so this can be served as a main dish, um, which a lot of people do, especially for a nice um, light lunch. We are going to use it as a side dish today and serve it with some salmon. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and have our dinner. And until next time, guys, we're saying goodbye. Thanks for joining us, and I'm going to keep eating. <laughs> Enjoy.